The big game is fast approaching, but wait, you still haven't got your tickets. You've spent hours searching, but you're still confused about ticket prices. Time to stop searching. Visit TicketCompare.com. We compare ticket prices for all the popular leagues and tournaments for you. We work only with the most trustworthy sites, so you can have peace of mind when buying your tickets. Compare prices, buy tickets, get to the game. TicketCompare.com. Buying tickets made simple. Vamos entrando. Ok, gracias. Te vas a sentar, por favor, si no, no empezamos la rueda de prensa. Gracias. Gracias. Ahora. Vamos, Morenati. Gracias, gracias. Ok. Por favor, señores, señoras. Gracias. Gracias. Y espera la primera respuesta y después paramos. Gracias. Okay, the manager's here to take your questions on the game. Um, the photographers can t take pictures until the end of the first answer and then they need to turn their cameras off, please. Can all questions and answers be in Spanish or in English? Okay, thank you. If you'd like to start. Does this squad that you have right now, does it have the same sort of characteristics of your two champions in the last? Yeah. 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 Would you mind to repeat, please? <laughs> you, you've won this competition twice in the past. Does this current squad share any of the characteristics of your previous champions? I won with Porto, and Porto was a very young team, a very, I would say, inexperienced team at uh, at this level, with so many players playing Champions League for the first time in in their careers. And then I won with Inter, which was exactly the opposite. It was a team with lots of players over the 30, with lots of players with great experience in high-level uh, football, but not successful until then. I think this squad is uh, is more in the middle of it. Uh, we have some we have some players with previous experiences. We have some others without experience. But I think in the end, uh, I I normally say that Champions League. Uh, Champions League dreams, they start around the quarterfinals and not yet in the last 16. The last 16 is still, it still looks a long way to go. When the team reaches the quarterfinal, then I think is the moment where uh, even the teams that are not favourites, which is our case, they start realising that anything is possible. But for the moment, I think we have just to focus on on a very difficult opponent, and in a, in a match or the first match of these of these two knockout a match that, that doesn't decide anything, but is very important. Okay, thank you. Can we ask the photographers to leave now, please? <coughs> <coughs> to leave, please. <coughs> Uh, Jose, um, Paul Pogba trained today, we understand, and, and travelled. Can you give us an update on his uh, condition after his illness at the weekend and condition to start tomorrow night? Well, I opened the training session uh, today and I opened in, uh, in a period where uh, we normally don't open. We normally do it in, in the warming up and in the first simple drills of the training session and this time we did it for quite a long time and in the last period so we could see uh, players in a competitive situation and when a player is in a in that in that competitive situation is because the players are normally ready and without without problems. So you could see in that in that training you could see some people that didn't play 
against others filled with problems like like Pogba, Valencia, um, Rashford, Herrera. So I think, in an objective way, you could you could look at it. Hola, Mister. ¿Qué tal? Ahora que se puede preguntar en español. Eh, cuando Alexis firma con el United, había pasado tres años en Arsenal sin poder clasificar de octavo de final y se queda este año sin poder. You signed up with the Manchester United. You were not qualified and couldn't uh, play for Champions League. And we know that one of your dreams is to win the Champions League. So I would like to know how motivated you are for this match in particular. En mercado de enero, cuando podía haber venido para nosotros o para cualquier otro club, we have a new podía haber esperado por player, Alexis Sánchez. And de verano, yo creo que una de las razones we could have waited for the transfer market in summer, but we decided to get him for this transfer market and we. Durante felt este periodo que no hemos jugado Champions, we needed him que, as well as a pesar de que Manchester we um, knew during this period where we couldn't uh, play Champions um, that the Manchester, Manchester will always be the Manchester United and Manchester, Manchester United in Champions uh, Alexis ha venido ya con la ilusión de entrar en it's quite a big thing Alexis came de, with all the the champions Yo sé que el año pasado ha sido para with all duro, his efforts put on this champions like stage we know a gente a jugar a, it has been hard for me also no as a coach final, to motivate my players y, y por with a competition uh, that we didn't want to play and because we won that competition we got to qualify for this Champions League so the motivation uh, is always there we always want to play against the best teams and this is why we like Champions best and so Alexis wanted to come to the team in order to play this Champions match for Paul and you've shown a lot of, of confidence in him. Is this the kind of stage, the knockout stage of the Champions League where he should be dominating games, where he should be kind of proving his worth to the club? I don't think it's fair to speak about the responsibilities of a player. I don't even like the fact that uh, the player that cost X millions doesn't have the same responsibility of the player that cost three times X. I think the responsibility is for everyone. So I don't like that kind of, um, of approach. I understand for you. I understand for you, but not for me. And the same way for me, when I decide a team to play, I don't look to, to the age, I don't look to the to the salary, I don't look to the transfer fee, because I think that's not also fair. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question. You have a really important week with two big games coming up tomorrow and then on Sunday again. Uh, does the injury affect you in, in the what way in this intense period? I know that, that I have two and, and more than two important matches, but... Uh, they are so important that the way to do it is to think just about one and not the next one. So it happened the same against Huddersfield. We played Huddersfield and we didn't save any player for the game today. We, we played the game with the players that we had available. The only player that didn't play was David De Gea, but was not to save, was just because we have lots of respect for uh, the Argentinian national goalkeeper and we we like he deserves to have some some matches to play to develop and to be ready also for uh, for the World Cup but every match we go with everything so tomorrow we go with everything we have and and tomorrow 
10.30 p.m., then we start thinking about the next one. Boa tarde, José Mourinho, Eduardo Pestana, RTP, Portugal. I have to speak English. Uh, you are back in a country that you uh, won lots of trophies. You are back... Only three. Three important trophies. You are back in a city, Seville. You won a big trophy for FC Porto in 2003. Good memories from this city and this country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were, because you are Portuguese, you are nice to me, and you told lots of trophies. There were not lots, there were just three. But I think, um, especially two of them, they represent much more than the numbers of, of trophies that we won. Because um, I come here in a difficult period for my, for my club. I come here in a moment of great dominancy of the biggest rival. So to win the the league in 2000 and uh, I don't know 12 or something like that meant meant a lot. Uh, the UEFA Cup in Sevilla in 2003, yes, I have to say meant a lot because it was the first time I was playing uh, European competitions with a very young team with a very inexperienced team and for us to reach that final and and win meant a lot if my memory is okay i think i had big victories here against sevilla but i also lost and honestly i'm not the kind of guy to to be thinking of what happened has influence or doesn't have any any influence i think just that uh, that tomorrow and in in a few weeks at old Trafford, the two teams are uh, are very balanced i would say the same chances for both but uh, we want to try we want to go with with everything and we are confident that over over two legs we can we can do it eh, buenas tardes. Eh, en una respuesta anterior ha hablado de los dos guardametas principales de 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 Gea. In another answer you mentioned el portero de la selección argentina de Gea and also Sergio Romero. Un guardameta que cuando el argentino goalkeeper. And I would like to know about him when we have the opportunity of watch him play. We had a really good sensation, but I would like to know what do you think about the work and everything he has done during this season and which are his options for next year. It's a really good question. Entrenador egoísta. Digo, pensar más en el equipo que en, we have que en el to think about the team more and less egoísta, in a particular player I este like caso, to think about portero, my team que para mí and that's my priority even if I maybe um, jugador, don't take that much advantage um, of a good player because I like calm and I, I'd like to have my team ready. De Gea, for instance, he was able to play in the last during the last match, but I left him out because we are so calm when he is there. That we need him a lot, but it's true that we have a third good goalkeeper. And for instance, I used to have one of the best goalkeepers in other teams. And I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next season, I would like to say that even if I can play for the next
Honestly, I don't think it's possible to score six goals in in here. In spite of Betty scored five, but I only see a club like Real Madrid or Barcelona with uh, Ronaldo or Messi in their best days to come here and to smash and score. Uh, five or six or six goals. I think the game they had against against Betis was maybe special because it was the local the local derby but out of order because normally Seville is a team that defends well. They have good defensive uh, organization. They defend with everybody. Uh, Montella is Italian. Italian coaches they know how to organize their teams by by the defensive point of view, very compact. I can see easily now the distances between uh, the wingers and the fullbacks are much shorter. Uh, the wingers they drop back to to compact with uh, with the fullbacks. Um, not like in England, because now in England some some experts that never sit on the bench they say the wingers they shouldn't defend. The, the midfield players, they, they should only attack, uh, but that's only in England in this moment with this generation of experts. Um, but Sevilla defends really well. I don't think it's possible to score, to score many goals. And I think the game is going to be really, really competitive because they can say what they want. They can be nice to us. They can say that we are favorites. That means absolutely, absolutely nothing. I think I prefer to say that they have good players and they have uh, and they have a good team and they have a good uh, mentality for uh, the knockout matches. Sevilla is uh, is a club uh, of cups, is a club that likes, that enjoys the Copa del Rey, enjoys the, the Europa League and now they have the chance to play the biggest competition of all. So the motivation is obviously even bigger. So for me, the word favorite or not favorite means means nothing. Okay, last question. Jose, you, you said that you weren't among the favorites to win this competition. I'm just wondering how important it is to make a statement in this tie by winning it so people start thinking that perhaps you might be contenders this season. The what? How important is it to make a statement in this tie by winning the tie so maybe other big teams think that perhaps Manchester United have got a chance of winning this competition? I told before, any team that reached the quarterfinal has a chance. I never thought I was going to win it with uh, with Inter or Porto before uh, reaching the the quarterfinals. And it's when you reach the quarterfinals that you have the feeling that that anything can happen. Nothing will change the dynamic. Is nothing will change the normal tendencies of some some clubs are in this moment uh, more ready to 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 win it. But I think when you reach when you reach the um, the quarterfinal is when any team can feel that that anything can can happen. So I think this step of going from 16 to 8 teams, I I think is always a very important step. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank Antonio you. Valencia will be here to take your questions. Gracias.